I don't know about the fanfic itself, but the only way we're going to find out is if I call up Inverted Shadow for right now. And uh, might as well see what he's up to. God, what did you do? Ah, <laughs> uh, that is a way to make vengeance. <laughs> now I'm about to locate your crazy other loony lover. Nah, never Hello, mind. allow me. Yeah, because I bet he changes his name more frequently than I change underwear. Yes, he did. Well, all right then. Can I just hear that? Okay then. That's uh, something. That, it's uh, a phrase. It's a fucking phrase. I I was okay. I think he should be in the call now. Hello. Get your headphones on. Get the right in the shadows. Night. Oh yes. Well, don't get me from behind the shadowy disguise. Oh, nobody knows for sure. Bad guys are out of luck. Because dark wind dark, yeah. When there's trouble, you call DW. Dark wind dark. Let's get dangerous. Dark wind dark, yeah. Watch out, bad morning. Dark wind dark, yeah. Woo. Wow, I think I just got slapped in the face by the dick of nostalgia. Yes! I remember it so you don't have to. Just like hey, a nostalgia and critic. A nostalgia critic called, he wants his shtick back. <laughs> shtick. It's funny, it's funny though. I mean, I was thinking to myself today, what is with all these new medias putting subtle My Little Pony references in? For example, the new series Teen Titans Go, the premiere episode was all basically about Raven shooing the Titans out of the tower just so she could watch a My Little Pony-esque show called Pretty Pretty Pegasus. And it, it, does, it also helps that in this series, Raven is voiced by Tara Strong. Once again. I mean, Tara yeah, was the um, voice of Raven me, uh, in the other series. Let me actually say something. Um, I actually, today I got to watching the uh, fan-made epi- the, uh, the Hasbro-approved fan-made episode of My Little Pony. Double I Rain Boom? It. Yeah, I got to watching it today. I'm like, the look! That's what a lot of bronies uh, pretty much said about it. I, I haven't watched it myself, so. I, I thought it was good, but then, like, I th it was pretty good. Then you get into the Powerpuff Girl thing, and I'm like, What? Yeah, and then to top it off, the fact that they that Pinky actually openly admits that she actually c can see through the fabric of space and time. Well, Pinkie uh, well, she broke. Well, she took that potion, and she she went beyond God tier on that shit. Well, yes. she took the potion and opened a giant door with the Adobe Flash logo on it. So I say then. I can't, believe, I can't believe Bubbles wanted to call Rainbow Dash Antoinette. Oh. <laughs> oh, if that's one, if there's anything that we know that Rainbow Dash doesn't like a side of losing, it's being called a girly. Mm-hmm. And then again, that's something Rarity's gonna abuse the fuck out of. So. <laughs> I still can't. Believe, I, I, like it's so mind fuckingly crazy that I still can't believe Hasbro gave the okay to it. I just don't know. I mean, apparently a lot of bronies hate it. Because, I don't know. From one of the complaints I've heard about I think was... Maybe, I think maybe they hate it is because of the use of science in the thing. Well, that's not what, I, that's not what I heard of. One guy complained that it was just basically a huge fucking month, a huge fucking thank you, or a huge fucking, uh, uh, well, how am I supposed to say this without being, you know, graphic? Tribute? No, it's not tribute. More like a big giant, you know. Uh, I can't. I can't think of anything about this. Very bad. It, it's like something. To, it's like pretty much saying that it's big, fi big giant fangasm turned into an episode to Lauren Faust. Hmm. More like so yeah, big giant tribute. A giant cluster fuck. A big giant cluster fuck of a tribute to mm. Lauren mm. Faust because it's like. Um, Pretty much, it's well, like. Technically, I think it's actually a tribute to both Lauren and her husband. Well, yeah, yeah, because of the fact that she, both of them, actually worked on the Powerpuff Girls 
Craig or, McCracken no. was the head guy behind it all. She worked a little bit behind the scenes from what I remember. But, yeah. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I lost my shit when Pinky just produced Blue from Foster's Home for Imaginary Prince out of the way. <laughs> some also complained that, if memory serves me, someone also complained that Rainbow Dash's voice was not to standard. Eh? It's meh. Well, yeah, it but, was a bit off. Oh, I mean, that. you can, I, but I give it leeway because the voice actress, well, who was it? Um, Ashley Bale, I believe. I can't remember. Who was Rainbow Ashley Dash's VA? Ashley Ball? Yeah, Ashley Ball. There. Yeah. Her VA says, it's even hard to do uh, Rainbow Dash because it's often strange. It's di- it's different than the one who did, it's different than the, um, the voice actress behind Pinkie Pie who has to exert a lot of energy, but, uh. Trying to sound kind of tomboyish would be a strain. She could do, she know, could do Applejack fine, but I give I give Pinky's voice actor credit. Trying to voice a, trying to voice a horse on crystal meth isn't exactly that easy. It's not crystal <laughs> meth. I'd say it's a truckload of sugar. <laughs> what? Carol's the one who got that in my mind. So well, it, it's, well, like, it's, it's true, man. Cool. I mean, no, I mean everybody else in the freaking Ponyville's been exposed to sugar. They don't do that. Only Pinkie Pie, and I think that can't be sugar. Well, it's but not just I sugar. Digress. It's pretty much anything pretty I much sugar Is it, Am I the only one who watched that thing and every time Pinkie Pie said snosh berries, I'm like... <sighs> like that because I'm like, the fuck? Snosh berries. <laughs> and apparently that, the fabric that, of snake... Whatever that, they are, ooh, apparently the fabric of space and time tastes like it too. Mm. They got that snosh berry thing from Willy Wonka, you know? I was thinking... Willy Wonka. I was thinking okay, that, that, Super I Troopers. Even... I don't know why. <laughs> Come with me, and you'll see, in a world of pure imagination. Ah, <laughs> uh, right. Nostalgia. Well, yeah. anyways, I think I've stalled this enough. You're probably wondering why I've called you two here tonight for this meeting. Why did you decide to, do it? Why did you decide to delay an interesting anime that I was going to show? I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm still needing <laughs> to prepare for that, making sure it's like... Um, um, no, we're having a hentai marathon. We're showing nothing but porn. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not sure about you showing hentai, but I could show probably a little bit of erotic kind of, you know, fan service. Hey, but, girls, bravo. May I, may I uh, by any chance, or may I by chance recommend a, um, I, oh yes, I may I by any chance recommend an anime for your thing? Uh, I'll make sure I write it down real quick. Let me see. Okay, no because I actually over. showed this to Carol, and I know oh, he's going to jump on I'm this prob- one. I don't know, but uh, depending, um, on what, well, depending on what you got. I get the show. feeling I think I know where you're going with this, but I'm not 100% sure. Gonzo, uh, you got some? I got notepad up. The what? anime is called Man You He Can Show, which is literally translated to, I should you not, in English, it translates to Magic Breast Secret Sword Scroll. Oh, I yes. see. I've heard about that shit. I'll think you about have? that. I have. I've heard that pretty much a little t- a little time before uh, my <laughs> I started going into the brony dumb a little bit, but not too much. Um, hmm. My slated idea, I'll deal with it later, but um, I'm not sure. <laughs> have you checked out? Have you checked out an anime called Girls Bravo? I have watched both seasons of that. Back back. That in thing like, is mind um, fuckingly funny. <laughs> Back in like and then there's this other one that that uh, my girl just uh, freaking uh, planted on me the other day. I can't remember what what it's called. B to A, B to H or something like that. About a chick who wants to have sex with a hundred guys before she graduates high school, but she hasn't lost her virginity yet, so she finds them a, a male virgin to try to lose it. It's kind of uh, convoluted. Why okay. would a girl do that? I don't. I don't get it. It's just mine. It's just. So she has this tendency to give me animes that just fuck with my head, and I'm like, uh, uh, I mean, I found it funny, but it's just like, why? <laughs> and the funny thing is, is, it's not even like that. Is the funny thing is that she just doesn't know how to do it, so it's always so stupid because she can't pull it so off. She's, so she's know, complete what? noob. She just, she just put out a complete demand. Noob, yes. She's put out a challenge for herself, and she doesn't even know how to do it. Exactly. That's why it's so. That's why it's so funny. I'm trying to remember the name. The B, it be something. You can Google German. that while uh, Andrew tells us what kind of fanfic are you planning on. Uh, oh yes, I was supposed to be. Oh yes, the fanfic. I think we're all going to love this one because, as I told Gonzo here, this is a fan fiction that was written for me by a fan, and he goes by the name of Doctor Ouija 1337 on, as he's called on FriendshipIsMagicFiction.net. 
And I'm still trying to find a title for this thing, but I think we're all gonna love this. Orale. So, shall I just dive in and get this shit started with? There is no title for this, seriously? Oh, oh, here no, it is. No, okay, I got the name. It. Hold on, hold on. Before you start, before you start, hold on. It's called Bigata HK. I'll check that out later. Alright. Uh, I got I got a link to the I got a link to a, to the dubs right if you want it. All right, you can link it in the uh, Skype and I'll deal with it. Yeah, I'll put it in the chat thing. Yeah. So uh, okay, back to back to you, Shads. Uh, give it. A I'm look. trying to find a title, but until then, let's dive in. <laughs> we'll call it the awesome stories of the avoided shadow. Wait. A <laughs> okay, let's see here. Written by Doctor Ouija, thirteen thirty-seven, and edited by Jake Roberts. Jake, Jake the Snake Roberts. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go on. Uh, have the snake proof Reddit. <laughs> anyways, Gonzo, you ready? Sure enough. <laughs> oh, oh, morning, in Ponyville. Was there anything more picturesque than a cloudless day featuring Celestia's glorious sun as its centerpiece? Well, I can think of several things. <laughs> That's, That's, not. Not. That's not. The denizens of a small frontier town were in about their business with the rest of the town proper, ready to seize the perfect day. However, inside the town's only library, there was one pony and a dragon assistant who were not about the town. Twilight Sparkle was getting ready for another day of studies, albeit today, reluctantly. Also, what, um, she actually admits that she does not like her studies? Hmm. No, she probably just didn't want to study today, or possibly a particular something she's about to study, probably. Makes sense. Well, it was Probably indisputable. <laughs> well, it was indisputable that the Lavender Unicorn was a passionate scholar. Even the best of them sometimes got exasperated with the heavy workload of often demoralizing busy work. Twilight was, for lack of a better phrase, running on fumes this morning and ideally needed some rest. Obviously. Mm -hmm. I mean, judging how much she has to write those claw fix to Princess Molestia. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, you have to go that way. <laughs> Yes, I, I, I just had to. I had to somehow. Anyways, I had, that made no sense to me. I thought it was a, a reference to a post on Ask Princess that just Molestia. Was the one who wrote those. It was a reference to a post on Ask Princess Molestia. Gonzo knows that for a fact. Oh. Anyways, let's go. Maybe I should just take the, the day off. off. She thought to herself while brushing her teeth. Looking at her reflection in the mirror, she could see the evidence that supported her idea. She had gotten a solid eight hours of sleep last night, but the stress-induced bags under her eyes indicated that she had been working too much. Mm. Spike, take a letter, Twilight said to her purple dragon assistant. The student's young ward whipped out a squirt. I was why was I about to say swill and crawl? <laughs> <laughs> You're a mess. Say what? It must. You must be gone. Like you know, uh, what was it? Uh, never mind. I, I didn't hear. I, could you say that again? I think I lost. I thing. almost, I almost said squill and crawl. <laughs> that happens to me a lot, believe it or not. Anyways, sometimes she, I say Nam, when I say Namco Banda, I end up saying Bando Namco. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, the student's young ward whipped out his quill and scroll in a motion that was second nature to him at this point. Dear Princess, yeah, he's done it so many times. I'm not surprised. Today I would like to take a break from my studies and see my friends, your faithful student, Twilight Sparkle. Well, that wasn't what? too long. Well, yeah, obviously those things are like expository, aren't you say? Like exposition shit. Now, I was just like... Considering we're talking about Princess Freakin' Celestia here. Mm -hmm. Spike mm -hmm. took the letter and breathed his signature emerald She might as well just, like, just put in the note like... Hey, hey, Princess Celestia, fuck off. I'm going to slack off with my friends. Signed, friend, Twilight Sparkle. P.S. Yeah, she away. wouldn't. Like, she wouldn't. Yeah. Let's continue. Anyways. The document. I've known some people on film fiction on that who would write it that way, though. Yeah. Don't get me started about Twilight Sparkle being a pimp. Oh, uh, let's... I, I've read a fan fiction similar to that that was happened to be written by the same guy who wrote Shirley Has to Reds, of all people. Actually, you know, if I, if I can look it up, maybe after, uh, if we have time, after Shadow finishes this one, we'll, we'll probably read that. Uh, one. this one's a long one. Anyways, yeah, let's get that. Yeah, yeah. Well, hey, Ru, could you, keep your, could you keep your interruptions down to a minimum? Yeah, I'll So try. we can get through okay. this? Please, thank you. <clears throat> the document disintegrated into a cloud of swirling smoke and flew out the window on its way to Celestia. About two minutes later, oh, that was quick, the baby dragon burped out Celestia's reply in a cloud of smoke. He unfurled the scroll and read aloud, my dearest Twilight, 
Of course it is okay for you to take a break from your studies to see your friends. Just make sure to send me a letter on anything that you've learned today. Yeah, so pretty much he's telling him, nope, you still gotta study, but you can go play. You gotta play and then study while playing. Well, actually, hmm. she would, actually, pretty much her social interaction sometimes teaches her uh, these lessons yeah. that uh, the show is based on. I mean, it was not social interaction. pretty much what I just meant, but okay. It was that social inter Anyways. <clears throat> Yeah, let's go. Twilight didn't say anything, at least not to Spike. Initially, she just stood there with a widening grin on her face. And then she thought out loud, Oh my, I have the idea to see my friends, what should I do? Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Um, did you just, like, have an aneurysm and start thinking at Pinky and just go into Pinkie Pie mode, or what the hell? No. I thought it was Twilight that's still speaking. literally how she said it, and that is literally how it is written. Well, it was like one word? Twilight! Uh, one run on sentence. Twilight, dear God! I'm sorry, I didn't realize this fanfic was written by Charlotte Bronte. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> she thought. And then the loud. continue guys will blame me for stealing their joke. Dun -dun 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 -dun. Very loud, loud enough to give herself a light migraine. Twilight bolted out to her front door, giddy as can be, about the prospect of an unrestricted day. Unfortunately, as soon as she took in her beautiful surroundings, the Lavender Unicorn experienced an unsettling rumbling in the air. What? Rumbling in the air? Yes. Storm? Uh, let's keep going. What could that be? She asked no pony in particular. Curiosity and nervousness sharing each other's company. Following the tremble was an explosive wave that sent tremors throughout the town. The ground was shaking, glass was breaking, nocturnal animals were waking, all this was interrupting the cake's baking. <laughs> hey, Zakora called, she wants to give me back. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's my line! Suck it. <laughs> it was practically Armageddon, but it ended almost as quickly as it began. That's God, I was trying to think of the theme song to WWE Armageddon, I can't remember. Oh, that was, uh... The end, oh, yeah, the, the end is near! Oh, yeah, there we go. Well, that was a pretty drastic turn of events. Well, actually, that escalated pretty quickly. Yeah. I wonder what caused what that. Just, what in the world just happened? Twilight thought as she was lying on the ground, having been rocked from her stance by the booming quake. She rose to her hooves and started trotting toward the commotion a couple of houses away. A large crowd had gathered outside a house, and judging from the sounds, they were not happy. Twilight walked closer and noticed that the owner of the house, a white unicorn with blue mane and shades, appeared to be held responsible for the sound wave. <laughs> oh, wait, what? Milo Scratch, DJ Pony. <laughs> wow. Wait, are you hang sure? On Destructive hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I'm going to keep reading, but somehow this seems tame for Vinyl Scratch. Anyways, let's keep reading. That final scratch has taken hey. a musical terrorism too far this time. A light blue mare musical with a terrorism. Blue... A light blue mare with a blue one white main gale. This was Colgate, an acquaintance of the unicorns that, as far as Twilight never knew, liked vinyl's music. So, wait, I thought. So wait, Colgate is friends with Vinyl Scratch. I thought it was Octavian. Whatever. Nah, this guy you know, needs Octavia it. is a roommate, remember? But oh, said... oh yeah, oh yeah. Twilight side. She found it hard to believe that the sound wave was Vinyl's fault. Normally when she played her music loud enough to create sound waves, they sounded like bass drops. You felt them move through your body and they were never powerful enough to shatter glass. Oh, well, what about that one instance in, uh, what the fuck was it? What the fuck was that video called with Vinyl and Octavia in it? I keep forgetting it. Um, I'm trying to think. Epic Wub Time? There it is. Epic Wub Time. I'm not sure. And no, I think it'd be even more destructive. I mean, come on, what about the bass cannon? Oh, not much, just my bass cannon! <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I'm, I think I'm still curious as to what could have possibly caused this. If it's not vital, then who? Hmm. Anyways, let's go on. This sound wave, however, had an otherworldly power behind it. It was hard to describe, but it had felt like having shattered glass pressed through your ears with a jackhammer. Well, that's an interesting analogy. Well, that's subtle. Anyways, Twilight then proceeded to force her way through the crowd until she saw Vinyl through one of the blown out windows. She could see that Vinyl had suffered just as much as every pony else. The glass in her shades had been blown out and she looked like she'd needed a gemstone by mistake. Ugh. One of her red contacts had popped out of her eye revealing its natural color of magenta? 
My... Oh, it's all I'm over about start this eye color debate again. <sighs> That's the same shit. Damn it. Let's let's just progress. Yes, Twilight let's go. Twilight prepared herself to attempt to mediate the situation. Needless to say, this was not the way she wanted to start her day off. Obviously not. Twilight cleared her throat. <clears throat> hey, Vinyl, can I come in? She asked gingerly. Calm down. Hang on. It's just me, Twilight Sparkle. I don't think it was your fault, Twilight said in your calmest voice. I am not opening the door while that angry mob is there, Vinyl quickly replied, pointing to the gathered mass of disgruntled ponies, some of whom were adorning pitchforks and torches. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do right. Vinyl! Man, the mob armed pretty fast. Yeah. Okay, every pony, back off! You can't start blaming Vinyl for what has happened. Yes, we can! The crowd replied in miraculous unison. <laughs> I don't oh. give a damn! We're not. We're not. St stuffing pitchforks <laughs> into her is not gonna work! It's just yeah. gonna kill her! Okay. Twilight breathed an exasperated sigh. Okay, how about this? Let me investigate what has happened. If it turns out that Vinyl was completely responsible for this, I'll turn her to you all. Muttering, the crown began to disperse, seeming to begrudgingly accept Twilight's offer. Satisfied, the unicorn turned back to the broken window. Can I come in now? Twilight asked soothingly with a warm smile. Uh, okay, but promise me you will be mad at me, Vinyl weakly replied, it's obviously upset and uh -oh. somewhat guilt-ridden. Twilight heard the door unlock and was just about to enter when she heard, Somebody help! The scream was coming from Colgate. What? Oh, shit. Twilight rushed what? over to where she had heard Colgate's distraught screams. When she got close, she saw Colgate leaning over something pink, bathing in a pool of something rude. Wait, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Can you repeat that? Whoa, whoa, what? Twilight leaned over the pink thing and saw... It, it's pinky. Twilight slowly said, becoming consumed by shock and fear. It looked so strange. Pinkie Pie was laying in a growing pile of blood with foam coming from her mouth, but when Twilight examined her, she could not find any wounds. No wounds? Where what? was all the blood coming from? How? What? Twilight stammered to Colgate. Colgate managed to reply without breaking down. It seems to be coming from her... her, her ears... Oh shit! Oh shit! I know this. I know this. Some certain loud sounds can rupture your eardrums and will cause your ears to bleed, making you deaf. Well, uh, that's it. But we still don't know what exactly caused this, do we now? We know what Arrow? the result, but what did um, cause? Anyways, anyways, Sonic chapter... Rainbow. I don't know. Let's anyways, check it. Chapter two. Twilight Sparkle was not enjoying herself in spite of the ideal weather. She was too concerned with Pinkie Pie. It had now been four days since she had been found lying in the middle of the street, bleeding from her ears. What could possibly have done something like this to Pinkie of all ponies? Twilight thought to herself as she trotted to the hospital, unwilling to believe that it was Vinyl's booming bass alone that incapacitated her friend. Excuse me. I mean, certainly Vinyl's sonic boom was powerful, but... Not enough to internally damage a pony like that, right? I hope not. The unicorn fought the conclusions that her mind was reaching. After all, just four days ago, she was standing up with a DJ. She couldn't just turn her back on her, not just because of vinyl, but because of the lavender unicorn's pride. Regardless, Pinky was in grave condition and was confined to her hospital bed. Twilight had received a letter telling her that Pinky had awoken from her comatose state earlier in the... Oh, shit. Comatose, so it literally shocked her brain so it literally rocked her brain so much she went into a coma? Pretty much. What kind of a what kind of explosion caused that? We'll have to keep reading then. Go on. As soon as Twilight got inside the hospital, she anxiously trotted to her pink companion's room on the third floor. Not being mindful of her surroundings, Twilight in her nervous sprinting brushed, bumped, and crashed into enough and into enough ponies and objects to make Ditsy Doo shake her head and be abused. What? The what? Uh, never mind. In her mind. nervous sprinting, Twilight brushed, bumped, and crashed into enough ponies and objects to make Ditsy Doo shake her head and be amusement. <laughs> oh, come on. Scholar Derby, we're not going to use. Okay, okay. 
Twilight finally like okay, arrived moving and opened the door gently and gingerly tip hooved her inside with her eyes closed, <laughs> hesitant to actually see the condition her friend was in. She was probably right to feel this way. This was not Pinkie Pie. This was a twisted ver inversion of the party pony everyone knew and loved. Her mane had lost all of its curliness or bounciness and now draped over the pink mare's head straightly. Okay, I'm going under the best. Getting under the best. Getting under the desk. In the style of fitting Pinkie in her crazy state. Her pink coat had lightened from hot to a very pale shade that was practically white? Um, can... This is not Pinkamina. I know, this okay. is her crazy state. Twilight was eerily reminded of Pinkie's gray complexion from her possession by Discord upon viewing her. The party pony was currently incapacitated and breathing heavily into her oxygen gas. Oh... She was literally near death. As it turned out, Pinky's condition was far beyond simple internal bleeding. Aside from the need of, for oxygen therapy, Pinky, in her comatose state, was connected to several IVs, as well as a couple of large machines that, upon close inspection, appeared to be some sort of life support system. Holy shit. Holy crap, something killed Pinky! <laughs> you or, tell me. Um, almost killed. Almost. Almost killed her. Anyways. Pinky was all that Twilight could say. It took all the strength she had to approach Pinky's bedside in a state that she was in. Twilight hesitantly moved her hoof to Pinky's head before eventually running her hoof gently across the party pony's face. The lavender unicorn wanted to recoil. Pinky was also suffering a terrible fever. How could this happen? was a running line in Twilight's bothered mind. All I can hope for you is that you're having pleasant dreams, Twilight muttered to herself, trying to fight back the tears. Aww. This Poor is Twilight. Bad. Twilight turned around, barely handling to see Pinky in such a miserable state, when she heard a faint sound from the sickbed. Is that you, Twilight? Pinky whispered weakly. Oh, man. <laughs> Pulling at the heartstrings, man. Oh. It feels. It hurts. Twilight slowly turned around. She was, for some reason, expecting a sharp object to be pointed at her throat. Okay, then. Wait, what? what? Twilight slowly turned around. She was, for some reason, expecting a large, sharp, sharp object to be pointed at her throat. Okay, moment ruined. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm. Now, it only made sense if the pinky in the bed turned out to be a spy. Yeah. She was aware of Pinky's crazy state, and it was something she was not prepared to encounter. So now, to look into those icy blue eyes and see something but pure sadism and a complete lack of empathy for other living creatures would cause her senses to freeze. However, it was a different feeling that Twilight felt radiating from Pinky's eyes in this moment. Her pupils were twitching, and the irises were fluctuating in size. The eyebrows were drooping with tiny beads of sweat dripping from the forehead. Twilight sensed Pinky's fear. But there was also a more complex feeling beneath the fear. A feeling that Twilight could not identify, despite all she had read about pony psychology. Is there anything Pinky would be afraid of? Twilight thought for herself when she stared at Pinky. I know you care for your friend, Miss Sparkle, but this is not an excuse for running around and crashing into other ponies at this hospital. The voice made Twilight jump from surprise. She turned to the door and saw that Dr. Stable was standing in the opening with an unamused mane. Hmm. Unamused main? I she don't goofed. know. It says M I E N, or I don't know what the fuck that means. M I E N. That's mean? mine. Uh, mine. Mine. Rubber. Rubber fruit. <laughs> Rare fruit, I guess. I Anyways, know. Doctor, be straightforward with me. Will she be all right? Twilight asked, her voice filled with concern and fear. I can guarantee a full physical recovery in roughly nine days. However, I have greater concerns for her psychological state of being, and frankly, I'm not sure how to help her. Either through physical or emotional trauma, I'm afraid that your friend is not all there mentally. Not all there? Wait. Was he ever there to begin with? No, 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 no. Listen. Did you serious? You, what do you mean, not all there? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I guess Continue. this guy, this doctor, yes, yes, yes. Twilight was shocked when she heard these words, especially since they come from some pony whom she knew as a professional. She didn't want them to be true, but she knew better than to doubt Stable. Are you okay, Miss Sparkle? You look like you could need a glass of water. 
Sable said, his voice a hint of concern. I think she might need a bottle of whiskey at this point. Yes, I'm fine. I just need some fresh air, Twilight said shakingly, walking towards the door, wildly slightly as she exited the room. Twilight rushed back to the library the fastest she could. She had some reading to do. Really? Really? And for some reason, the obvious answer of going over to Vinyl's house and still trying to figure out what the hell happened there, it did not come to her once? Anyways, well, come on, Twilight. You've been reading nonstop for like eight days now. These aren't even whoa. topics you're interested in. Just look at these. Complete Equestrian Encyclopedia of Sonical Creatures and Advanced Interrogation and Identification Spells and Techniques. So I could regrettably learned that whatever Twilight took interest in a new topic, that meant less time he could spend with Sweetie B. What? Okay. Wait. Wait, wait, hold on. Can Before you... I think I know what you're about to say, and yeah, it does kind of make sense, but hold on. Okay, can you repeat Eight that? Eight days straight reading. Real, and she's reading interrogation. Are we freaking trying to get into Pinkie Pie's psyche, or are we interrogating a mental terrorist? Well, I'd like to repeat that. Spike had regrettably learned that whenever Twilight took interest in a new topic, that meant less time he could spend with Sweetie Belle. Okay, then... I Trust still me, don't get it. Fan fix on fan fiction for that to actually make sense in my head. I, I don't get it. Are we sh trying to ship uh, Spike and Sweetie Belle? Uh, or something? I think I understand it though. I mean, you know, you, you, uh, the whole Spike rarity thing, you know, that's legit. But some people actually go with Sweetie Belle sometimes because you know age the whole is. Spike age thing. You know, because when he gets older, you know, because basically when he and Sweetie Belle get older, they'll be at the same age. So basically, when they're at age, they'll be. You know, the same level. I think that's the reason. Anyways, Twilight was just about to go give Spike a lecture on why she was reading about these specific topics when she heard a knock on the door. Who could that be? Don't they know the library's closed on Sundays? Twilight turned Sunday? to the door and so opened So they have the Sundays in Equestria. They got They're days of the year. They got days. Pinkie Pie was standing opposite her. That's right. Pinkie was signed out of the hospital today. I knew he forgot something. Hmm. Um, I'm... Um, she's... Since we've already established that she's not all there, I'm not really sure if opening the door would be a good idea right now. Well, let's find out. Can I come in, Twilight? Sorry to disturb you, but I need someone to talk to. Pinkie said, her voice trembling slightly. Of course, Pinkie Pie, please, come in. Twilight well, said, that... swearing slightly when she saw Pinkie's mane. It wasn't bubbly, but almost plastered to her head. She was not herself, both in looks and in countenance. Oh, this isn't good. And the way she's talking, she sounded like Flutter. Okay, this is weird. I'm not used to seeing the party pony dumbed down like this. It's creeping me yes. out a bit. Pinky entered the library, and the first thing she did was collapse to the floor, sobbing loudly. Aww. What's going Something on? Something's not... Let's find out. Pinky, Pinky. Feels. It's okay. It's okay. Everything's okay. Twilight said with a calming voice while wrapping her four legs around the crying pony in a tight hug. You have to tell me, Pinky. What did this to you? Could you tell me what it looked like? Twilight took up a quill and scroll. She was going to use a spell that would draw a perfect picture of whatever creature Pinky might describe. Hmm. Didn't know stuff like that existed in Equestria, did you, Gonzo? Stenography. Well, well with tw well, well with magic, pretty much almost everything's possible. So Anyways. why not have a why not use magic to become an instant stenographer? Oh, let's go on. I I don't want it to be true, Twilight. Pinky cried. Could you at least tell me what kind of creature it was, Pinky? You're the only one who knows what it looks like, Twilight said, doing her best to convince Pinky to overcome her seemingly cryptically depredation. Oh, God. Uh, can you hold on Why while I get a drink only... and figure out what the hell you just said? Okay. Give me a minute. Uh, I think I'd like to, I'd like to, while we wait for Gonzo to get back, I'd like to wage several guesses. I'm going let's, to guess Let's that hold, this... hold on to your guesses. I don't want anything to be spoiled, especially for the viewers. Well, you don't have to answer me if I'm right or wrong. Just you know. I don't know. Correct. I just, just, I don't know. It would ruin the surprise. Whatever surprise is waiting for us, and I'm already kind of fearing it. I still, I'm just gonna I say I'm assuming it's going to be a human. That's maybe. I don't know why. But, Who knows? Yeah. I don't know. I can't stop watching this clip of Raven and the My Little Pony thing. It's so fucking Raven's a brony. Yeah, let's let's assume. Yeah. That. I don't know how I'm going to work that in the Arcadia, but I'm going to have to figure it out. I also, in this the news, brood. can't get over the fact they still have that pet maggot slimy thingy they got from the first Teen Titans. Remember that one? 
Ah, uh, yeah, Silky. Yeah. yeah, I can't believe they still have that here. Uh, there we go. Yeah. I guess there's continuity. Oh, yeah, back? Kind of. There we go. And, well, we're going to find out what it was at this picky end. Oh, God. What is it? Minky whispered through her sobs. It, it, was, it was... It was a... Pony! Oh. Okay. Twilight I'm was shocked to this. Uh, what pony would ever hurt Pinky? However, she had to keep it rational and not let her feelings get the upper hoof during this interrogation. Could you dis continue your description of this pony? All traces of feeling was gone from Twilight's voice. She was doing this professionally. Well, it was a Pegasus. It had the same size and hairstyle as Fluttershy. When I think about it, what if it was Fluttershy? Oh, fuck! What the hell?! The Fluttershout! Wait! Hold the yeah. fuck up! Uh, 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 I, I, Hold uh, the fuck uh, up! I don't even know How do you not- Hold on, let's not jump to conclusions <laughs> just yet! What is more powerful- What is more powerful than the power of dubstep? The power of ear rape! How did we not- Hold on just for a minute, because it's just ear rape. It could not have caused an explosion that will probably be, uh, I don't know, it'll probably deafen what if vinyl. What ear rape with dubstep? Well, the only way, let's keep going. Let's just keep going. We, we'll, we gotta see what happened. Pinky, how could you even think of such a ridiculous thing? Twilight replied, fearing, however, that there was perhaps a grain of truth in Pinky's accusation. The Pegasus was pale. It, it had red hair in its eyes. I'll never forget those eyes. They had very small pupils, and the really weird thing was that the left eye was blue and the right eye was red. The right eye also had what looked like some kind of scar around it. Did... Oh, God. So it is Fluttershout. Oh, my God. For A people, doy. For people who have no idea, let me explain, if you guys are willing to. Uh, yeah, I, uh... If you're well, if you're willing to allow me, of course. We fill them in once they get yeah. the full description of Fluttershy. Yes. Don't you think? Yes. Well, let's just see <sighs> what they let's just see what they said, and I'll fill in the blanks. Pinky had never sounded this serious in all the time Twilight had known her. Pinky was, however, visibly fighting back tears as she described the pony that had almost killed her. Was the pony wearing any clothes at all? Twilight was going to get as much information from Pinky as she possibly could. Pinky now had visible tears rolling down her cheeks. She took a deep breath. <sighs> well, it, it had a red and white striped top hat. Oh. Yep. Is there any I have more no idea that we how can describe? describe the mark here. <laughs> Twilight looked at the picture that her spell had drawn. It sure looked a lot like Fluttershy, but that was impossible. Fluttershy would never hurt any pony. Besides, there were several key aesthetic differences. Of course, Twilight didn't count on the possibility of Fluttershy physically altering herself. The mane could be colored, but changing from butter yellow to pale white was incredibly risky, not to mention expensive. Then the eyes, while colored lenses were something that had grown in popularity recently, the pupils could probably change size, but that's removing the possibilities of lenses, but an operation to change the colors of both the pupils in different colors? I thought was ridiculous, yet not impossible. No! It's not impossible for this to be Fluttershy. However, to be sure, I need to know what the cutie mark looks like, now that I have this spell that can identify the talent connected to the cutie mark. Huh? Oh, man. Well, Twilight's just wait, full... Wait, 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 Twilight's just not, full of spells, you know, isn't she? I mean, come on. We needed to tie... We needed, I bet the guy needed to tie up the plot hole, so let's just let him do it. It probably does not help, but I finally figured out that the title of this fanfiction is literally Madness of Sound. Madness of sound? Yes. Ugh. How, why about I just go ahead and just say what she TV. is right now? Ladies and gentlemen, you are dealing with a fan fiction that is starring my own creation, Fluttershout. The horrific transformation of the cross between Fluttershy and the king of ear rape, gay penis. Or old sax, however you're going to call him. Yes. Pretty much... Ear rape for you guys. It'll be just about any sort of jump scare you can find that has piercing sounds. For it's actually pretty much like if you were to get up right and call to the camera like this in the third. 
like that. Yeah. The Fluttershout, her power being possessed by old sex, intensify that ear rape power by, you don't want to know. Let's just say it's it'll be, you know, it'll make you deaf upon hearing. Anyways, let us continue. Uh, I still cannot believe it's my own creation in Ponyville. Oh, what have I done? Look, you didn't write this shit. Your friend wrote this shit. What is he doing putting Fluttershout in the middle of Ponyville of all places? Oh, let's find out. I'm liking this so far, actually. I would be surprised if the rest of the mean six show up. The elements of insanity? Anyways, 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 anyways. One way to find out. Twilight had spent the entire day copying the picture of the Pegasus and distributing them all around Ponyville. She had just placed the last one when a mid-green unicorn rammed her straight on and almost knocked them both out. Don't it, Lyra! Watch where you're running! Lyra! Twilight shouted while rubbing her head. Sorry, Twilight! I, I just wanted you to know I've seen the Pegasus you're looking for! Lyra's obsession of finding mythical creatures, humans, Bigfoot... Bigfoot? Bigfoot! <laughs> had at least rewarded Bigfoot her with the ability you. to pay attention to Actually, everything. Actually, you know what? We, um, usually we'd say apparently Bigfoot exists, but since nobody's truly seen Bigfoot... Yeah. I don't know. Let's Where? Just Where did you see it? Twilight replied, elated that the news had reached her so fast. I saw it over at Fluttershy's cottage. She's living in Fluttershy's house! What is going to be the odds that it's either Fluttershy's really transformed into Inverts creation, or for some odd reason, Fluttershy and Fluttershy are existing in the same fucking universe? Well, well, let's find out. This caused Twilight's people. Well, if that if that second one were true, then odds then there's always the rule of don't touch each other, or else it'll cause a temporal paradox. Let's just find Twilight out. said, uh, Twilight thought to herself, "What if the pony's gonna hurt Fluttershy? That could hurt Pinky." Twilight ran as fast as her legs could carry her to the small cottage at the edge of the Everfree Forest. She noticed how all the windows and the door had been sealed with planks. Oh boy. Yep. Oh, Why is that not surprising? me? all right, Fluttershy? Tyler whispered to herself. She carefully bent a plank away and peeked in through the window. In the middle of the room, lying on the floor, was a strange pegasus. Pinky had been correct on the looks. Even the top hat was there, balancing on its head. Okay, Twilight, you can do this. Just look at the cutie mark and use the photograph spell. Twilight swallowed and moved her eyes to the cutie mark. Really weird looking it was. It was a butterfly with speaker-shaped patterns on the wing. Yep, there it is. Ah, figures. But we might as well just go ahead and put it out there. Butterfly. Well, I'm, the I'm hoping in the later uh, issues we got, in the later editions, like chapters and whatnot, we get more cameos from more of the ponies in the Shadowverse. And oh, the, Star Wars. the only not? way we can figure that out is to keep reading. Not? Let's see if the Pegasus talent can shed some light over its mysterious behavior. Twilight was determined to stop the weird Pegasus before any pony else was hurt. Twilight opened the cellar door and entered. She prepared a special area where he could, she could perform all sorts of advanced magic. It was a table with a hexagram painted on the ground beneath it. Did they Either we're looking at dark magic or alchemy. Did they just stole a page from Little Miss, from Little Miss Rarities? I, I see what you did there with the blood and bones ritual, Gonzo. You can't fool me. I know that! It's like, seriously, did this guy copy from the blood and bones ritual? <laughs> well, anyways, three not. of the points I'm, I'm on the star. His guy. I'm thinking alchemy, dude. I'm thinking fucking no, the, alchemy. The only way to find out is if we... Full metal alchemy shit. Keep reading. That's, yeah, let's keep three reading. Of the three of the points on the star had drop-shaped artifacts, the so-called Tears <laughs> of the Goddess. They could store magical energy and would thus make sure she had enough for the spell. The other three points had a crystal with a mark for infinity chipped out on them. These were called Catalyst for Protector. They would hinder any stray magic from exiting the hexagram, as well as restore Twilight's energy whenever the spell reached a higher arcane level. The Twilight entered the hexagram and placed some papers and a quill on the table. She then entered the spell that would identify the talent of the cutie mark. She concentrated and felt the arcane energy bend and twist like snakes around the bond she created. The spell quickly drained her own energy, and she could feel the tears supplying her with more. Suddenly, one of the bonds crackled, and loose magic started to swirl out, but it was quickly consumed by the catalysts. After channeling for about ten minutes, she could feel the energy drain lessen as the spell neared completion. A small purple smoke cloud appeared out of nowhere and lifted the quill, slowly being absorbed by the feather. Twilight strained her magic to make sure the spell was finished correctly. The quill landed on the table again, now bearing a strange aura. 
It was not dark. It was more lacking light. Some kind of anti-photons, if you want to get theoretical. Twilight lifted the quill and put it towards her forehead. She felt the picture of the cutie mark disappear from her mind as the aura from the quill turned crimson red. The quill hovered over the paper onto the table as it started to write and draw. When the quill stopped... What? This doesn't make any sense! The text of the paper looked like it had been written by a dyslectic... By a dyslexic chipmunk. <laughs> uh, okay. I didn't, know this, I didn't know chipmunks could write. Anyways, wait a second. This isn't a random symbol. This is an H and an I written on top of each other. A what? Hi. An H and an I? Hi, I'm Napa. Isn't that the, uh... Isn't that... I think that's the logo for... What was it? International? Or Alice in Cham... Alice in, Cum Alice in Cummings? I was trying to remember, because it sounds like it sounds like a logo that comes from a tractor company. Anyways, it seemed like the quill had written two different things on the same area. Twilight redid the spell, this time instructing it to use half of all the information on one paper and the rest on the other. The results were both confusing and terrifying. Paper 1, Cutie Mark, Butterflies. Special talent, communication, and caretaking ability in regard to animals. Known bears, Fluttershy, Element of Kindness. Paper 2, Cutie Mark, Bloodstained Speakers. Special talent, generation of sounds booming enough to injure large creatures. Known bearers, none. Hmm. What was that last tidbit? Known, Known bearers, bears, none. None. As uh, in, there has been no pony before this with that particular Bloodstained Speakers of Cutie Mark. Uh, Twilight must have read those documents half a dozen times. All of this was insane. This was absurd, ludicrous. And it was too much for Twilight to handle, who collapsed in total exhaustion. Ooh. What? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold it, hold it, hold it. Hold it. What's with that sudden now? Luda! Whoa, bitch, get uh, anyways, out the way. Get chapter, out the way, bitch. Get out. Chapter three, people. And this is where things are going to get real. How many chapters we got? Um, well, unfortunately, I am sorry to report it's not finished yet, but it currently has five. How far, then? How, how, how much so far? Currently, five. it's at five chapters, and hopefully uh, we'll finish it soon. Anyways, chapter three. Ooh. What's happening? Fluttershy was laying in the middle of her living room, staring at her hooves. The color of them disgusted her. The once butter yellow color was now pale. She had nothing against white coats. In fact, she liked it. But this wasn't white. This was a color that belonged to the dead. And the buzzing! Fluttershy felt as if something was in the back of her head. When she searched her mind for it, she found a buzzing cloud. It was driving her insane. It whispered to her. It was hungry for control. Oh, shit. Yeah. This is like more jerk shit, man. Oh, here's where it gets real, real sick. If only she hadn't fallen asleep that one night about 11 days ago. Where? Oh, you'll see. About you 264 where? hours. Have you not fucking... Yeah, may I go to get about 264 hours earlier. Fluttershy was tired. She had been vaccinating all her animals from a mutation of pony immunodeficiency virus, a mutation that could infect other animals as well. So, oh god, apparently AIDS exists in Equestria. Except and they already ponies. have a cure. How nice. What? Now the... they can give it to us? Uh, let's not. The fact that she had a light migraine didn't make the job easier. She took an aspirin and made her way to bed, collapsing on it and falling asleep instantly. She felt a light breeze in her face. Had she left her window open? She opened her eyes and the first thing she noticed was that she most certainly was not in her bedroom anymore. She appeared to be in the middle of a graveyard. A graveyard. So it's pretty much... In a sense, I think we're we all know where we're going with this. Yeah. Uh, is any pony there? Little Luna? Is this your George doing? She knew that the princess of the night could manipulate the dreams of ponies, often for her own amusement. <laughs> she felt a chill run through her She yelped. This graveyard felt wrong. She couldn't put her hoof on it, but she wasn't supposed to be here. She saw a grave in front of her. The name had been erased by Lime and Weather. However, on the grave, a white and red striped top hat was laying on the dirt. She couldn't help but walk up to the grave. It was as if she was being pulled closer to it. Then the next thing you know... She was standing right in front of the grave when she heard a muffled noise. However, she couldn't hear much of it. What happened next was something she would never forget. 
The top hat hovered up in front of her, and a strange creature emerged from the dirt just so that the top hat ended up on its head. Fluttershy tried to run. She knew she had to run, but she couldn't move her legs or her wings. She just stood there staring at the creature. It was an undead with greenish skin, and the flesh was visible and sagging in some places. The creature said something incredibly loud. It wasn't equestrian, but Fluttershy saw that the creature was happy to see her. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Am I supposed to believe that equestrian and English are two different languages? Apparently. Uh, let's just go along with it. Anyways, uh, eh. the creature moved up to Fluttershy with surprising speed and grabbed her around her neck. Fluttershy felt the creature squeeze her air pipe, starting to feel dizzy. The creature was strangling her. Black dots were dancing across her field of vision. She felt her body going numb. But right before Fluttershy felt unconscious, something happened. She felt her mouth snap open, and a sound came out that sounded like a vacuum. Then everything went white. Fluttershy bolted up from her bed. It had only been a nightmare. She looked at her hooves. They had turned pale, probably because of panic. She got up and went for a glass of water. She felt a faint buzzing in the back of her head. The migraine was coming back. But walking into the bathroom, Father Shai took a look at herself in the mirror. What she saw caused her to yelp and faint. She stood up on shaking legs. She'd probably been unconscious for hours. Why was she afraid of herself? Well, apart from the fact that she looked directly intimidating, she wasn't sure. Looking into the mirror for a second time, she stared into the face of a pony with one deep blue eye and one crimson red eye. A crimson red mane and a pale cream colored coat. The pony also balanced a red and white striped top hat on its head. She turned and investigated the cutie mark. It was a butterfly that had a red stain on it with marks on the wings that looked like speakers. Yep. So basically, apparently, okay, here's what I'm getting. Fluttershout has come to the MLP universe, and basically since she technically is Fluttershy, when she came to this universe, she basically took the same, she basically... Fused with Fluttershy, unintentionally, you know, this whole dimensional rift junk. But basically fused her, and that's why her Q mark looks pretty much, she's Fluttershy, but she's also fl Fluttershout. So, it's two minds in one body. Mm hmm. Well, one would say that. Let's continue. True. Yes. I'm not even sure if I explained it correctly. Anyways, Hell, I don't even know if that was right. As soon as Fluttershy saw the cutie mark, it was as if the buzz, it was as if the, <laughs> it was as if the buzzing in her head reacted to it. It became slightly louder, and she felt it spread through her brain. She realized there was only one thing she could do. Ask some pony for help. She needed to see Twilight. She always knew what to do. As she felt her body being filled with panic, she dashed out of her cottage and headed straight for Ponyville. Although she tried to be as discreet as possible, what if some pony she knew were to see her like this? I think we all know what's coming now, but... I think Hi! We... Are you new in town? Because I don't know you, and I know every pony in town, so that means that you are new. And then my store welcome to Ponyville party. I'm Pinkie Pie, by the way, and I really like your hat, although Rowdy might not think it's that nice. Oh, boy. So this is what oh, happened, God. really. Of course, the first pony Fluttershy had to run into was Pinkie Pie. She didn't seem to recognize her since she tried to give her a welcome to Ponyville party. Problem number one. Friends might recognize me. Not a problem anymore. Binky just kept talking and talking about everything in town, when this started to really annoy Fluttershy. Oh, shit. Oh, dear. As she got more annoyed, she felt how the buzzing in her head got louder. It filled her mind, and it started to fuel her annoyance, and it turned into anger, which turned into hatred for the Pink Pony. Oh, shit. And then I'm going to take a wild guess and say that's yes. what happened. Just who does she think she is? Doesn't she have any respect for private space? Oh, she's making me so angry I could just scream! I was also Except this say time that. she actually did scream. Fluttershy was... opened her mouth and screamed. What happened next snapped her back into herself. As soon as she opened her mouth, reality seemed to distort around her and Pinky. All colors were inverted and shapes twisted randomly. Pinky struggled to stand up from the sonic assault, only lasting around 10 seconds before her ears popped and blood started to flow from them. Pinky collapsed in a growing crimson puddle. Shit. So that's what happened. It wasn't vinyl. It was basically Fluttershy trying to get to Twilight, but unfortunately, Pinkie Pie, being Pinkie Pie, got 
pretty much got to her head too much, and she pretty much screamed until Pinky went completely near well, dead. Well, here's the thing, though. Fluttershy has been put up with, has put up with them, Pinkie Pie and Sandy, a long time, so she's been used to it. Fluttershy, however, no. Well, now you know. You all know the full extent of Fluttershy's powers. <laughs> and it, well, so we can also tell it wasn't intentional. We can also tell it wasn't intentional. She was just, un she was just, you know, because since Fluttershy wasn't used to it, she got annoyed. And then when she got annoyed, bad things happened. But it wasn't intentional. It just happened. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm losing my voice. Fluttershy just stood there in horror. She had just injured, maybe even killed Pinkie Pie. And she had enjoyed doing it. <laughs> well... She felt a smile spread across her face as she watched the pink pony twitch. She saw that what her sound had done to the rest of Ponyville, she started to giggle. She liked doing this. <laughs> Weak Fluttershy is no more. Let Equestria know that their true queen, Fluttershout, the queen of ear rape sound, has arrived! Inver, mm. can we get back to the story at hand? I did. That is what is written here. Really? Yes. Huh. Oh. Oh. Welcome to the new way. Into the new way. Welcome to the new way. Yes. Thank you Fluttershy. for breaking the awkwardness. Fluttershy, no, Fluttershout, was looking around at the street. The destruction she had caused was just the kind of shock and all these lowly ponies needed to understand why she was a better ruler than those weak and empathetic. Alicorn sisters. Oh, they're, all, they're not weak. In fact, I have a comic dub that I wanted to work with. Uh, I am Shadow about that. Well, let's. Uh, keep going. No, what? The Fluttershy I would never hurt any pony. Did you hear that? I will not let you control me. Fire the missiles. No, so, internal struggle. Yeah, Fluttershy managed to suppress the ominous buzzing and regain control of herself. Dashing back to the cabin and quickly blocking every way in or out. If she were to let this flutter shout control her, all of Equestria would be in danger. Wow. Present time now. Flashback over present time. Fluttershy was struggling against the buzzing. It had been hammering her mind constantly for almost ten days. She knew what it was trying to do. Trying to give flutter shout control. Here, here's her remote. No! But my friends pump. need me! I am the element of kindness! I can't let you endanger Equestria! Despite all her will, power, and effort, Fluttershy was starting to lose her foothold in the mental battle. She hadn't slept and she hadn't eaten, and her mental strength was running on fumes. <laughs> oh, come on! Would you not want to be some pony important? Aren't you tired of being weak and helpless? I could give you true power. I could make you into the ruler of Equestria. Just give me the controls for a while. Fluttershout was showing no mercy. She was bombarding Fluttershy with images of her on the throne with Luna and Celestia chained like animals at her feet. Ooh, okay, this is... Ooh. <laughs> okay, um... Yeah, not once in my entire... Time in the fandom, like have I ever seen anyone, I mean anyone, put Celestia and Luna in fucking chains, or oh, in that, any kind of submissive yes. position for that matter. Never seen it happen, nobody's done well, you obviously, oh, can't bring You it obviously have not been around uh, Derby Bro, but th then again, this is not sexually kinky, this is more like, yeah, ruler dominating, showing your true and showing your true fucking <laughs> iron fist or iron hoof in a sense. My god, I don't even know what the fuck to think of this! Well, shall I continue? Go on. I think my stomach is flipping for yes, no anyways, reason. Anyways, anyways, anyways. Loon to Celestia train like animals. She saw pictures of Twilight, Rarity, Rainbow Dash, and all her other friends worshipping her and offering everything they had for her. She saw how she forced her friends to have intimate orgies with her in her bed. She what? What? <laughs> okay! Well, I think we're done! <laughs> I can Okay, continue. wait, 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 okay. Okay, maybe the last song was coming from Fluttershy's own mind, but still. <laughs> okay, could you repeat that? I think I just, I, 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 I either, that, what either you just said just flew by me, or I didn't hear it. I don't know. Could you okay. run that by me again? Okay, 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 maybe the last song was coming from Fluttershy's own mind, but still, it disgusted her. No, I mean the part before that. Uh, why all her other friends were her, saying how she forced her friends to have intimate orgies with her in her bedchamber. <laughs> 
Uh, okay, that. What? Yes. What? Can I get a ticket to the nope train to fuck that bill? <laughs> the, mi the main, the mind rape train has no brakes. I think I ran me over. Continue. Yes. <clears throat> Fluttershy. Oh wait, wait, wait. Fluttershy tried to push Fluttershout out of her mind one last time before collapsing from the exhaustion. She felt Fluttershout's mind flow in and assume control of her body. She didn't even care anymore. She just felt so sleepy. Fluttershy closed her eyes and allowed Fluttershout to have full control. Biggest mistake ever. Somebody get the sledgehammers, the axes, the katanas, the M70s, the M60s, the... Uh... Shotguns, auto shotguns, super shotguns, and uh, rocket launchers. Well, let's go on. Fluttershy felt the breeze. I just ran. I just tried to run down the entire list of bells. She opened her eyes and she saw the bright blue sky. She sat up and realized that she was laying in the grass outside her cottage. Something felt off, though. Hmm. Why is it so quiet? Why are the birds singing? And where are all my little animals? Fluttershy stared at the thick fog surrounding the area around the cottage. It looked like she was in the eye of a storm. Her thinking was cut short when a sound came from her cottage. It sounded like something was trying to clean the kitchen. Clean the kitchen? Hmm. Continue. What's going on? Hang on, wait a minute. Where's Caro? Yeah, sorry, I had that. My dad has telling me something. I was oh. like, what? Could you, could you get back there and see? There's something inside her cottage. And it's not Fluttershout. Uh-oh. Hello? Is any pony there? Fluttershy crept through her empty house. She heard the whistling that her tea kettle made when it was done. Uh. Whistling? Who made the tea kettle? Angel Wait. Bunny, is that you? Fluttershy didn't want to go closer, but she was so curious of who was making tea in her house. She peeked into the hospital and saw a large creature standing by the stove. It seemed to be watching the tea kettle. Fluttershy yelled when she recognized it. It was the creature from her nightmare. This time, very much alive and healthy. It noticed Fluttershy turn around to face her. Fluttershy hid behind her mane, terrified. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. Wait. Am I to believe that old sex has come out of her body and taken human form I in think, her house? I think this is inside her mind, actually. Pretty ah. much. Hello, Fluttershy. I've been waiting for you. Would you like sugar and milk with your tea? Oh. Sorry if I've scared you. I couldn't destroy your mind, so I locked it up in here. It's quite cozy, actually. Eh. Eh. The creature spoke with a friendly tone. It was as if huh? it actually cared for Fluttershy. Mm. Okay. This can't huh? be... Uh, did we miss something? No. Anyways. Why are you uh. doing this? Why are you wanting to take over to Equestria? Who are you? What are you? Fluttershy was still afraid of the large creature, but she sat down by the table with it. It wasn't like she had any other choice, and she really didn't want to make it angry. I suppose I have introduced myself properly. I am Gay Penis, King of Ear Rape. I am from an alternate universe called a Modiverse. Mm, Modiverse? That sounds cool. Fluttershy stared at the creature. Well, hold on, hold on. Let it be known to everybody hit the night that from now on we should call the G Mod. The world where our Gmod creations come true, the Modiverse! What kind of vulgar name and title was that? The creature leaned forward and Fluttershy tried to hide herself behind her mane further. Please, Sebastian, I don't want to be here! Somebody, any pony, take me away from it! Fluttershy started to cry softly while trying to avoid looking at the creature. It reached out with a hand and patted her in the head. Aw, oh, there, there. Calm down, Fluttershy. I understand if you're scared, but you will have to get used to living with me. Why don't we go and sit down on the couch for a while? I'm quite tired. Fluttershy felt her vision flare red-blue when Gay Penis took away his hand from her head. She instantly calmed down a little and looked at him. He isn't that scary when you think about it. And he is actually quite kind. Uh-oh. Are we trusting, dealing with... Are we dealing trusting with Trusting some... the king of ear rape may not be a good idea in the long run. I don't think it will. Continue. Gay Penis walked out in the living room and sat on the couch. Fluttershy followed and jumped up in his lap where she started to pat her lightly on her head. Hmm? Okay, was this person... Okay, when, okay, okay, hold on, hold on. Let me, before you say anything, Gonzo. What the 
hell did gay penis become a softy? When did he become such a big softy? I don't oh. know. I think he must have been playing way too many rounds of the game I was playing last night. Anyways. What Thanks. game? Trail the Punch. Never forget me. It's a fucked up anyways. arcade game. I'll explain later. Yeah. Eh. Anyways, anyways, anyways. Wait, what am I doing? Why am I letting him do... It... Never mind. Why would I not let him do this? He is so kind and he is my master. Master? Ooh. Master! Okay, break out Hold the, the fuck and up. chains. This is getting weird. Hold the fuck break out the whips up! And break out the whips and chains. This is getting fucking weird, don't you? Okay. Fluttershy. Accepted. Calling gay penis. Master? Are you fucking kidding me? It's just, it's, it's so going to show that she's accepting her transformation and possession. Um, I'm actually, I'm going to be honest with you. If I, if you had read this to me, like, way before, I think I would have gotten up, thrown my chair to the ground and yelled, I'm done! But, for some reason, I'm we're starting not even to go, close to I'm that. starting to think that this is starting to go through the route of Zerum Hooves. Oh, God, are you, oh, 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 I see what you did there. I'm starting to feel that fucking blocks. way. Anyways, 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 let's go. Let's just go. Let's just go. Fluttershy's, Fluttershy's vision flared red-blue again, and she nuzzled Gay Penis's arm. She closed her eyes and fell asleep. Doesn't that feel better, Fluttershy? No worries in the world, just you and your master. Gay Penis allowed a small smile to creep across his face, as Fluttershy's cutie mark was already fading. Oh, the transformation is almost complete. This sucker... Meanwhile, in Canterlot, Celestia felt the unease that meant one of her subjects losing their destiny. Yep. Whoa. Whoa. Gay Whoa. penis Whoa. is Whoa. starting to persuade Fluttershy into letting him take over her. Pretty yes, much. But... Ooh, Here's... Just... Okay, okay. Now, just based off what I'm getting, here's what I think. Losing her destiny, getting a new destiny, but... You know, not tied into the elements of harmony. This same destiny will corrupt the other elements of harmony, and thus, bada bing, bada boom, elements of insanity. Mm. Who knows? The only way we can find out is we continue oh, on. Chapter four. This one could be interesting. Hmm. All right, we're on a second to last one. Let's see if we can wrap this up. Twilight had woken up and uh, shown the test results to Pinky. She had taken it surprisingly well. At least Twilight thought so. All Pinky had done was mutter something about making. Am I reading? About making cupcakes, and then she walked out of Sugar Cube Corner. Uh, was she relatively normal? Yes. Hmm. Twilight had been reading about cutie marks with negative attributes for the rest of the day. She heard a loud knock on the door and checked the time. 10.46 already? Time sure flies. Twilight made her way to the door and opened, only to find Pinky dressed up in a dark camouflage jumpsuit. She was carrying a black cannon on her back. Whoa. Whoa, whoa She's... Whoa. She... <laughs> Pinky's on Rambo. Oh, she wants to make sure that whatever gets her will not have a chance to get her again. Anyways. Hello. Come on. Come on, Twilight. We can, I need your help! Twilight looked at Pinky and decided that it was better not to ask what the crazy party pony was up to, obviously, as this wasn't exactly out of her character, as the black cannon on Pinky's back obviously was a party cannon of some sort. Um, are you sure mm, about that? Nope. Yeah! Twilight took the black jumpsuit that Pinky had given her from nowhere and put it on. What are we doing, Pinky? Shouldn't we wake the other girls? Twilight was just as confused. By now, she was standing just outside the library in the middle of the night, wearing a black jumpsuit, standing next to another mare, wearing an identical jumpsuit, as well as a cannon on her back. No! We can't wait the other girls! It's harder to do a ninja stuff if we do it more than two! Our target is currently sleeping in this house in Cloudsdale! Cloudsdale? Their target is in Cloudsdale? What? I suppose I'll pair the balloon then. Twilight decided to play along with Pinky's little shenanigan. Hopefully no pony would get hurt. Unlike that time when... Twilight shuddered to even think about it, for she was still having nightmares of that cat. Huh? Cat? Cat? Uh... Hmm. I don't remember cat? a cat. 
Unless you're talking about Little Miss Rarity, I have no idea what Anyways, you're talking about. Twilight teleported herself and Pinky to the launch pad for the balloon. It was already filling up with hot air. Pinky was staring at Cloud Zay with a small grin of determination on eyes. I am coming for you. You better run, Shadow. What? Say what again? Can you repeat that? I'm coming for you. You better run, Shadow. What? Dude, can you... Shadow what? Shadow Wait. what? Shadow Rush! Wait, what? I, uh, my mind... Let's keep reading. Pinky and Twilight got in the basket and began their ascent. Twilight wished that Pinky wouldn't do anything stupid while they were out ninjying in Cloudsdale. Are you Ninji sure? In? Oh, come on. Ninji in? What are we in Mario 2? What the hell? What? Uh, what? You, you couldn't have just said the proper term, Skyrimming? Um, <laughs> because <laughs> Molestia comes to mind? <laughs> <laughs> anyways, anyways, anyways. By the way, Pinky, what type of party cannon are you carrying? I haven't seen that model before. Twilight was eyeing the black cannon. It had some sort of drum shaped magazine, and the barrel was much thinner than the regular type. Oh, Twilight, you're so silly. Can't you see that this is a party flack? Huh? A what? Party flack. Party flack. So apparently flack cannons exist in Equestria. What's a flack cannon? Oh, you never heard? It's one of those special kinds of artillery that shoots projectiles in the air and they explode into shrapnel, and that kind of helps with anti-air defense systems. Uh. Am I right? Okay, a party um, flag will that, cannon. Okay, that'll work against anti-air systems, but will that work against Pegasus? Pegasi? Who knows? Anyways, I've sat, I have a sash around Ponyville in case I need to throw airborne parties. Okay. <laughs> Twilight hey. shrugged and started to look for a nice landing spot. She didn't like Pinky bringing a flak cannon into Cloudsdale, but what could be the worst thing to happen? Every pony was asleep anyways. Um, I'd like to give you a list of all the possible things that could go wrong with Pinky having a flat cannon in Cloudsdale of all things. Okay, I could also one, think of, I kill also a bunch of Pegasi. Number two, wake everybody's asses up. Number three. Um, yeah. I also forgot. We also forgot to mention one thing. they they haven't done that. You know, that little spell that he used in what was it? Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, I think the Sonic Rainbow. Yeah, 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 yeah. She's going to cast that as soon as they get there, or it's probably implied. All right, anyways, anyways. As soon as they touched the clouds on one of the public landing platforms, Pinky leapt out and rolled into the shadow of a nearby building. Twilight got out of the balloon and walked over to Pinky. Stay down, Twilight. We need to be stealthy. Oh, gosh, it feels like I'm playing Hitman, but with me instead of Agent 42. What? Okay, Hitmanums! Okay, another thing that should not exist in Equestria, obviously, and it's Hitman Absolution! Hitman! <laughs> Hitman! did her best to keep quiet, but Twilight saw now how hard it was. Why are we here again? I think you never told me, Pinky. Twilight wait, would at wait, least... Wait, hold on, Agent 42 is not a ninja. What the fuck? Anyways, Twilight would at least want to know why she was standing in Cloudsdale in the middle of the night. Oh, Twilight, didn't I tell you? Commence Operation Inverted Shadow. What? What? They Excuse put me, you into Cloudsdale, too? They put you into wait, Cloudsdale? So you're telling me, you're telling, wait, wait, wait. You're telling me that Shadow, Flutterwolf, Starstruck, wait. and... Uh, I can't... I, I don't even remember oh, Dusty's Hold on, wait a minute. Anymore. Are you I thought you... Seriously, Dusty, who's, are you gonna tell me that the four of us and all our other pony compatriots who are not living can't live in fucking Cloudsdale? What do we have like a fucking country club up there or some shit? I thought you I lived in Mass Pass, New York, you fucking liar! I don't. My mind is fucking blown. With, with, <laughs> what the I fuck? I went to your house, man. I went to your fucking house. Was that a fucking lie? Anyways, oh, I'm going too far. Inverted Shadow, our target, this house here in Western Cloudsdale. The meanie, or at least the meanie's dumb hench pony, should live there. Hey, D dumb hench ponies! <laughs> I am not a hench pony, Pinky. You're Operation just, you're just a nutcase. A co-conspirator. Okay, Anyways, Operation Inverted Shadow. Why did you choose that name? Twilight was confused, but Pinky only gave her a. May I borrow one of your hooves so I can do a triple face hoof glare? <laughs> what? Triple A. Triple face hoof. When the double face hoof is not enough to contain that amount of fail. Can I, bro? Anyways, <laughs> what is the fail? 
What is the? Uh, anyways, anyways. Well, calling. well, duh. It was either that or Operation Downright Orange. <laughs> Downright Orange? What? Okay, Pinky. Uh, okay, now, what now, now, you... now the bitch lost me. She fucking lost me. Okay, anyways, I think. Anyways. Okay, pretty much from what I can understand, I think that bla I think that blast of flutter shout scream has scrambled scrambled her brain beyond comprehension. It well, is now we, beyond we we're anyone. Out is to find well, out. Let's, uh, let's, be, let's be honest. Let's be honest here, Gonzo. Uh, her brain was already beyond comprehension to begin with. Well, let's continue reading then. Let's see how scrambled it is now. After sticking around for a good 20 minutes, the duo finally reached the house Pinky had been searching for. It was nothing special. It was a plain little house with only one floor. Pinky stuck up to a window and peeked in. Twilight, albeit not happy about doing it, peeked as well. Inside was the bedroom of the house. In the bed, a black Pegasus with a red mane snoring loudly. So I do live in Cloudsdale. You liar! <laughs> you do not live in New York City! <laughs> you fucking liar! <laughs> Suddenly, I'm, I need to find a Cloudsdale map for Gmod and fucking put that shit in there. You can Anyways. find you can find it through Pwn. You can find it through that, uh, what, what was it, one side? Uh, never mind. I'll, Anyways, I'll show you. The only thing in the room that was even remotely unusual was a dark red hat sitting on the bedside table. Thank you! So the look is complete. They put Gmod okay, into the Okay, there's Shadow Rush. We got Flatter Shot. Now, where the hell is Star Trek and the rest of the anyway. G, G, G Moderation X ponies? What the fuck? <clears throat> Anyways. Aha! I knew he was a baddie. All baddies have dastardly mustaches. Huh? Dastardly mustaches? Dick Dastardly. <laughs> Mutt Twilight rolled her eyes. When was Pinky planning on acting mature? Pinky, that Pegasus doesn't have a mustache. Why don't you just tell me why he chose to troll this particular Pegasus and we'll be on her. Oh! <laughs> Wait, what? Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Slow down. Ladies and gentlemen, the one word you should never use when in the vicinity. Of us. Twilight was already fantasizing about rolling in under her bed sheets and reading Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> <laughs> what? Fifty Shades of Grey? <laughs> Excuse me. While you know, I'm going to I'm going to do the I'm I'm. Go I, ahead. I go go to your. I can, do a I can only do a double face palm, but I'm going to actually do a two a double face palm and a double foot palm because I'm going to have to use my feet for this one too. Oh, motherfucker. You could Anyways. just go ahead and just puke in a garbage can. Click. Uh, hey, what are you doing outside my window? Why are you wearing black jumpsuits? And why are you carrying a flat can in the middle of Cloudsdale? That's like begging for some point to beat you up. While Twilight and Pinky had been talking, the Pegasus had woken up and noticed them standing outside the window. He was now leaning out of the open window, eyeing them suspiciously. Yeah, what are you ponies doing out of my window? Seriously, you uh, pesky mares, get off my lawn! His hat makes him look stylish. Why I thought stylish enough to make her blush slightly. Oh, I ain't having that shit. Mm. Wait, 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 wait. Can you repeat that? Wait, wait. Shadow Rush and Twilight Sparkle. I ship it like FedEx. No. I. <laughs> I ain't having that shit. <laughs> Ship it like FedEx, everybody in the stream. Ship it like FedEx. Oh, what have I done? Ship it like FedEx. <laughs> ship it. Anyways, anyways, anyways. Let's go. Well, um, we need to stop. <sighs> Twilight didn't get longer on her excuse before Pinky bolted through the open window and pinned the Pegasus to the floor. <laughs> Pinky, get off me! Twilight climbed to stop Pinky as he was just getting out of hoof. Pinky, stop! What are you doing? You don't even know him. Well, I tried to pull the pinky away from the poor Pegasus, but she wouldn't much. Oh, yes, I know him! He's the one responsible for what happened to Fluttershy! Isn't that right? Inverted Shadow. Oh, God. She's got my name. She's got my number. Hide me! Hide me! You know, you could go back Sorry, to New York City. I'm going to hide myself. I'll, I'm a co-conspirator, damn it. Why don't you just go back to New York City? I don't want to die. 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 I don't he was pushing a hoof against his throat. He was visibly struggling to breathe. The Pegasus's pupils shrunk away when he heard the name Inverted Shadow. He started sweating and desperately tried to push Pinky away from him. Inverted Shadow? What are you talking about? My name is... Shadow Rush. Oh. Well, fair enough. At least they got the name right. Shadow Rush trembled as Pinky forced him still on the ground. It was a very suggestive pose. Ah, uh, uh, ah, uh, I'm not having that either. I'm not having that. I ain't having that shit. 
Another shipping! Another shipping! Oh, uh, damn it! <laughs> Bum! Put that oh, ship inside of a shipping ship. container and put it on a CXX train! It's shipped! <laughs> what the fuck have I done? <laughs> okay, let's go, let's go! Let's see how rude- This is a guy on YouTube, god damn it! Let's see how- Let's see how lewd it gets. She looks back at the interrogation and gasps- Shadow Rush, found it before Moby the declared a player! She looked back at the interrogation and gasped as Pinky pulled out a scalpel of her nowhere and leaning very close to sh- whoa, 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 whoa. No, 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 oh, okay, it went good, it went good, please don't Pinky, please don't scalp him, please Let's do see. not, he does not need to be, he does not have to be dissected like some high school hey, wait, wait, science wait, wait, project. Wait. Hang on, what's this? Let's see here, would black cupcakes with red frosting look good? I might even make custom muffin cups with their cutie mark on them. If you want, of course, maybe I should begin with the ears this time. It would what? be nice with some variation from the standard procedure. Wait, 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 hold the, hold the fuck up! So seriously, the sprain is scrambled to even include her mental... Even, they even put cupcakes for fuck's sake! <gasps> Are you fucking serious?! Apparently, in pure adrenaline-powered panic, Shadow managed to force Pinky off of him and darted out of the window. It was closed, but a thin glass pane was enough to stop him. Uh, doy. Uh. Pinky leaped after him with a fierce cry and gave chase. Twilight stuck out through the door and looked at the crazy display. Shadow was flying above the roof, so Pinky was parkouring on the rooftop. So apparently, she's been playing Mirror's Edge, MSD embodiment of Faith. Or she could just be parkouring like Stan Lee. <laughs> Anyways. Or maybe Mayor's Edge. Anyways, a confetti explosion appeared next to Shadow, forcing him to change course. The party flag sure at a high rate of fire. Twilight could barely see Shadow behind all the exploding confetti, but suddenly Pinky scored a direct hit and Shadow lost his balance, crashing to the ground with Pinky on him instantly. Tell us what happened to Fluttershy! Pinky yelled at him uh, with all incapacity in Shadow's face. I'm sorry, can I stop for a moment? Shouldn't it be on the cloud floor instead of the ground because they're pretty high up i have no idea i have no idea and, I'm... and try to crawl away let, let, let's let, listen let's just let, let's just say it like this it's pinky pie it doesn't make sense let's try not to make sense of it move on fine twilight shadow yelp and tried to crawl away but he just crawled into twilight looking at him with pleading eyes get this crazy mare away from me i'll tell you everything just don't let her turn me into cupcakes I... Yeah. Don't do that. Well, that Ever. And patted her on the shoulder. I don't think any pony would want to eat black cupcakes with red frosting. Yo, that's racist, yo. I don't think they want to be yo, eating horse. Shoes, I don't green, think they want to so be eating. Green. I don't you think anybody would be eating, you know, they should just pony. Yo. A cupcake that contains parts of pony in it. Shadow Cupcakes isn't a, a good idea, Pinky. Why don't you let me do the talk? Hey, uh, I'm not... I, I don't... I'm not sure if I want to defend that or not, but then again, I don't know how you think. Yeah. So eh. Maybe you're right. Black cupcakes do sound a little gross. Seems like today is your lucky day, punk. Twilight's a lot nicer than me when it comes to meanies. If looks could kill Twilight... Wait, 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 wait. The fact... Uh, am I the only one who's not seeing this? Twilight is apparently okay with this, which means... A, Cupcakes is canon in his universe, and B, Rainbow Dash is no longer around. Oh, who knows? Anyways. Hmm. If looks could kill, Shadow would have been liquefied by Pinky's stare. Ooh. He crept away a little and hid his face under his hat. Uh, good point. Twilight took Shadow in her magical grasp and carried him to the balloon. They descended back into Ponyville and got inside the library. Twilight locked the door and sealed all the windows. They sat down by the table and Twilight prepared two cups of coffee. Now, I think you promised me a story in exchange for me saving your life. Don't worry, I won't threaten you, but you're not getting out until you've told me everything you know about this. Twilight gave Shadow his cup and a picture of the pony that used to be Fluttershy. He looked at the picture for a second before pushing it back. No, I I'm sorry, I've never seen her before. Denial? His eyes darted all over the room and he was sweating a little. Twilight looked at him suspiciously and took the picture. Wow, this just tells me to tell me that your pony counterpart is a nervous wreck. Okay, it was worth a shot. You might never be able to say Fluttershy. Twilight fought back tears as she said it, and she slowly made her way towards the bedroom. 
Shadow couldn't stand watching the devastated mayor and leave after. Wait! I haven't been honest with you. I do know that mayor. Come back to the table and I'll tell you. Twilight instantly brightened up and she smiled at Shadow. They sat down and Shadow started talking. Oh, I'm gonna like this story. Hmm. A long time ago, before Nightmare Moon returned, I lived in a different universe. It was called a Modiverse, and I was one of many who possessed near godlike powers. I could create and manipulate matter and beings at will. I sometimes took things from other universes to experiment with. One night I took a being from this universe, and the one you call Fluttershy, and placed her in a graveyard for others like me. Little did I know that she would be possessed by one who had a specialty to manipulate sound so that it could physically harm other beings. The result was a creature in the picture. We call it Fluttershout. Hmm. Hmm. Let it sink in, people. It's uh, out in the open. I had but, something, but I'm going to wait a while. But what happened? Why are you here? Why is that creature here? Well, I felt like she had more questions now than before. May I continue? Anyway, Princess Celestia did not look on this action as something small. She managed to save the soul of Fluttershy and constructed a new body for it to inhabit. She then decided to punish me. She took all my powers, turned me into a pony, and forced me to live under a new name. In the Modiverse, they called me the Inverted Shadow, but Celestia forced me to change my name to Shadow Rush. I promised her and myself to put my old life behind me, but it seems like it finally caught up with me. Okay, um, number one, how in the world did Pinky know of him? Hmm. Suddenly, I just got an amazing idea to end ex Escape from Ponyville. Hmm? You're just saying that you... Well, it's actually kind of teasing on the ending you made in your last episode. It actually gave me an idea. Go on. I'm not sure... It... Well... Uh, I need to develop it more, but the fact that you say that she stripped you of your powers and left you to live in Equestria, I don't know, I think I could roll with that somehow. Somehow, yeah. Mm. Anyways, <clears throat> he took a sip and then the people coffee. And, and, and when I mention it, people still tell me, that's still a thing? <laughs> don't worry. I'm it's overseas. still a thing, people. It's just that I, ha I, just, mm. uh, like, I have problems getting ideas. When I get ideas, that's when I get to work. Okay, That's my story. Go. As for Fluttershout, I think she'll try to become a ruler or something. She always had a furious mentality. He began to walk to the door. What is Fury? What does Fury mean? Twilight knew more languages than the average Ponyville citizen, but she had never heard that word before. It means leader in German, or as you call it, Germain. Shadow took off with a burst and flew back to Cloudsdale. The last thing Twilight saw or heard of him was a loud bang followed by a black and red shockwave. She whispered to herself about oh, suddenly a Oh, shadow game. rain boom. <laughs> a shadow rain boom, motherfucker. <laughs> Shit. Son of a bitch. Son of a bitch. Fuck. You make me... Wait a minute. You know you make me want to... What? <laughs> <laughs> Throw your hands up and what? Anyways, chapter five, and this will be the last one for now, sadly. Oh, Hopefully the, next, the last ones will come in... Time. Let's see how much we can go through. Chapter 5. Fluttershout was strolling through Ponyville. Not a single one paid her any attention. It was a funny feeling that their future queen was walking in the middle of the street without anyone knowing. She got to the train station and boarded the train to counter. Oh, shit. She's already heading there. It will only be a matter of time. She made sure to enjoy the passing scenery. Normally There's I wouldn't be afraid. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Normally I wouldn't be I wouldn't be concerned about Celestia and Luna's well-being, but considering who we're dealing with, I would assume that that bomb shelter you have in the in the Cantalot Castle basement would probably be a good time to use it. Hmm. She was. Don't worry, Fluttershy. I think you're going to enjoy this too. Now that you'll know what's going on. <laughs> Fluttershout. I'm muted. It felt incredibly good to be alive again, especially in a world where you didn't die because people forgot about your existence. The train slowed down and stopped. Fluttershout stepped out of the train and looked at the buildings. She gasped. She was there. She was in the capital of Equestria. It was breathtakingly beautiful. She happily trotted down the street, every problem in the world temporarily gone, and she now had a free way to the castle. If I may. Let's fly to the castle! Pow! Seriously? Yes. What the hell? I I can't believe how amazing Canterlot is. It's beautiful. 
Fluttershy was talking to herself, but she made sure to tell Fluttershy. Ooh. Fluttershy's been there before, wasn't he? Fluttershy gleefully trotted down the street where she suddenly heard a sound from a nearby alley. She went up to it, curious of what the sound was, when she felt a magical aura grab her and pull her in. Um, uh, okay. Hello there, pretty. Do you have any bits for a poor unicorn, or do you have something else to offer? Fluttershy uh -oh. felt herself being pushed up against the wall as a dark green unicorn with a sand-colored mane crept out of a nearby shadow. Huh? What? What? Well, wait, wait, wait. Describe it again? A dark green unicorn with a sand-colored mane. Why do I get the feeling I've seen that pony before, but I don't remember its name? I don't know. Like, I, I don't think I even heard his name. I just remember seeing him somewhere. He pushed himself close to her and whispered in her ear, Trust me, you're going to enjoy this. He had to even and... kiss her and Fluttershy could feel his breath in her face, stinking of hard cider. Oh, boy. Stinking of hard cider. Oh, that's most beggars in Bloomington, Indiana. Let me go. Release me or or I'll scream. Uh-oh. Everybody get down. What? Diving into the bunker. <laughs> Please do scream. No pony will hear you. And it just makes Oh, you want to bet, motherfucker? You want to bet? <laughs> the unicorn looked Fluttershy out in the eyes and chuckled. And the, she felt all the magic grip started to spread her hind. Don't worry. Uh, just keep reading, dude. I bet you it's just going to be stopped before anything. Fluttershy out proclaimed, Fine. You asked for it. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Get down, everybody. And. Somebody is about to lose their junk in three, two, one. Flutter shouted open her mouth and screamed right in the face of the pony. The blast was powerful enough to launch him into the wall on the other side of the alley and knock him unconscious, breaking the grip he had on her. Flutter shout stood up and looked at the down unicorn. She spat on the ground in front of him and walked out to the main street again, this time making sure to stay away from alleys. Hmm. Oh, good point. Twilight, where are you going? Can I come with you? Please, 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 please. Pinky was following Twilight as she trotted at the train station. Fine, Pinky, you can come, but this is not a fun trip. You have to warn the princess. If I can tell Celestia that a mad demigod thing is trying to take her throne, she might be able to stop it and save Fluttershy. Wait, 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 wait. You're going to go to Canterlot and tell her instead of sending her a note with through Spike first? Hmm? Pinky looked at Twilight with a frown and sighed. Maybe she wouldn't find this trip to be fun after all. Hmm. Well then. Is it? The train left the station. Their car was empty, save for a pony behind a large newspaper. T Pinky's Pinky sense was ticking off like a nayer, uh, like a nayer counter. <laughs> Try a Geiger counter. God damn. Oh come on. Please, it's not that bad. It didn't Anyways. even it didn't even register on my phone. Some scan. pony was following her in Twilight. She tried to discard the feeling, but she couldn't. It just came back. And Twilight's nagging on how slow the train was moving didn't make it any easier. How can they be so slow? Are they running on raspberry juice or something? I bet even my grandmother can make this train go faster. Nah. Hey conductor, can't nah. you make this suit can't go any faster? I have a princess to save. Twilight was running out of patience rapidly. Pinky back what did away. She say? Oh, the conductor. Okay, never mind. Pinky backed away a bit just to be on the safe side. Next stop, Caterlot. Can old crazy bears please type off a train? <laughs> the magical old crazy mares get off the train. There's your side right there. The magically enhanced voice wasn't helping. Twilight was calming down. Twilight walked out of the train closely followed by Pinky. Where are we going next, Twilight? Do we need to go and see Celestia? She looked at Twilight, and she looked back and nodded. Yes, we're going to Celestia. The faster, the better. But when Twilight heard the next voice, You need help with stopping Fluttershout. I'm kindly offering my assistance. When she looked around, Shadow Rush, you did come! Hmm. Seriously, you know what she's what Fluttershout's capable of. Pinkie yes. Pie now knows what she's capable of. Twilight, bounced Twilight has up. an idea of what she's capable of, and yet you people don't bring reinforcements. I realize I couldn't leave you to stop her yourself. She's far too powerful for you to handle on your own. Shadow pushed Twilight away and started to walk towards the exit of the train platform. Come on, we have to hurry, don't we? So let's just hold in court right now, and we should take the chance to warn her. Shadow Rush grabbed Pinkie and Twilight, and he then set off towards 
the castle at the full speed. We reach the castle gates in ten seconds flat. Shut a rainbow, motherfucker! I know what I hate. Pinky and the slightly green twilight walked up towards the line of ponies, saying to me, the princess, Whee! That was fun! Let's do it again later, okay, Shadow? Well, we'll see, Pinky. First, we need to warn Celestia. Hmm. You have honored this entire unit. If, ugh, if there was one thing Twilight was grown to hate in the last 10 minutes, it was to be delayed. And of course, there had to be a line of consisting of over 100 ponies between her and Celestia. As the line slowly became shorter, so did Twilight's fuse. When they were down to place Why do I get the feeling Celestia's not going to be at the end of that line? When they were down to place 50 in line, Shadow swore he could feel the smell of smoke. When they uh -oh. were placed 20, Pinky could see Twilight's eyes starting to glow red. When they were placed uh -oh. 7, Twilight's coat had turned completely white. Get in the bunker! Hide! Twilight's about to fucking blow! <laughs> when it finally was their turn, Twilight had to summon a small rain cloud to cool herself down before she could enter. Because the reason the guard came outside? Sorry, but volatile materials and creatures are prohibited inside the throne room. Since they what? Sorry, but volatile materials and creatures are prohibited inside the throne room. Uh, so basically her going aflames. Yeah. Twilight, Pinky, and Shadow entered the throne room. On the far end, sitting on the throne, was the goddess of the sun, Princess Celestia. Yes! Hello, my faithful student. What brings you here today? Celestia spoke with a regular voice, caring and loving, but at the same time authoritative and regal. After a kneel, Twilight began to talk. I'm here to warn you, Princess. Uh, excuse me. Right by my extended receiver suit. A, a powerful being has possessed Fluttershy and is going to try to take over Equestria. You have to be ready. Celestia looked at Twilight and chuckled. <laughs> now, now, Twilight, if something like that existed, I'm sure I would know. Are you sure you aren't just overworked? Maybe you need a couple of days off. Now, if you would please leave me, I have important matters to work with. Am I the only one who's getting a little suspicious of this? Nope. I'm not the, the only one, one who suspect who thinks that Celestia should get off of her goddamn high horse, for, in a metaphorical sense, and take Twilight seriously because her past, um, the past two I'm times. I'm actually going to go with. I'm actually going to go with Fluttershy. Already got there, got the Celestia, and pretty much, you know, is pup is the puppeteer pretty much. Uh, here, here's the thing. I think that pretty much Celestia has forgotten two times already that Twilight has, twined, has tried to warn her of impending doom, and she has yet to take Twilight seriously. It's like she's fucking ignoring the student who's trying Nightmare to help Moon. her. Hold on, hold on. She warned her about Nightmare Moon, and then, you know, she's pulling the strings, you know, trying to get her to do... So I'm assuming she might be doing the same thing here, but I don't know. But I'm pretty oh, sure it could be like Fluttershell already got to her in... Fluttershy already got to him. Pretty much, she was just putting on a facade because well, she knows. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. The only way to figure out is to find out. Let's yes, let's reading. go. Please. Oh. <clears throat> Upon hearing this, Twilight completely lost herself. She just sat down on the floor with her ears hanging. Maybe I am overworked. I've done all this for nothing, and I wasted the time of my mentor. Twilight, don't you dare be thinking that now. Don't. Seriously. Please, her eyes princess. Gonna start twitching again, and her hair gonna get all matted and shit. Please, princess, I've seen this thing. I know what it is. Twilight is telling the truth. Please, just let us explain. When Celestia heard Shadow, she turned to him and frowned. You, I remember you. Shadow Rush, was it? I thought I prohibited you from meeting any ponies, and now you chose my crystal student as your next target. Uh oh. Wait, that's not what it meant. Shadow backed away as the princess raised her voice. Uh, I'm sorry, it won't happen again. Shadow hit behind Twilight as she stood up and began to walk away. Sorry for wasting your time, princess. I think I should just go home. Yeah, no. go. Yeah, go ahead. Go home and let the and let the godforsaken Flutter Shadow take over Equestria. What you Pinky, try to? Wait, 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 wait. Pinky followed close by the Twilight. Her pinky sense told her something was not what it seemed to be. Hmm. What? Twilight, Shadow, and Pinky sat at the cafe in Canterlot. They stared at their coffee as if they were having a staring competition with it. You know what I think? I think, Mickey began before Twilight silenced her. No, Pinky. Not now. But Twilight!
Good, I got a reaction. Pritchie left ear, Rumley stomach, it behooves his liver failure. Wait, it means somebody was, was failure. It, it, it means some pony was being manipulated. Wow. I, you called it. This, Shadow looked up. He saw for a while before it hit him. Of course, Fluttershout isn't just the queen of ear rape, she's the queen of sound in general, and every pony queen can control what they're queen over. Twilight's ear twitched. Ooh, are, are, you, are you saying that Fluttershout has hypnotized Celestia with sound? Shadow nodded. Whoa. Dude. Dude, Dude. you fucking Dude. called it, Kero Star. Dude. You called it, dude! Is it? I think I can actually, like, I don't know what it is. It's so much time with Shadow that I think I actually, his line of logic, and can actually predict it before he says it. Hmm. Let's go on. We must fear, but we don't know if it's true. We need to confirm this first. Twilight and Shadow's bright were dying at the time of King of the Sea, but Pinky, on the other hand. Of course there's something going on with Celestia. Didn't you see her eyes? They were flashing red-blue every now and again, and she didn't have any cutie mark. What? Holy shit. Pinky <laughs> is much more observant than Twilight is. Damn. Wait, 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 wait. Twilight just stared at Pinky, then Pinky saw Twilight's man begin to catch fire, erupting into a ball of rice. You knew all the time, Pinky? Why in the name of Tartarus didn't you say anything? Yes, she knew that something was up, and Pinky didn't say anything. So what's Pinky's excuse? Well, um, because you didn't ask, is that a good answer? Or maybe Bucky, when I'm Pinky, hate is gonna hate! Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Can you repeat that shit? <laughs> last ditch, last ditch. Wait, wait, what? Because you didn't ask. Is that a, because you didn't ask? Is that a good answer? Or maybe Buck you, I'm picky. Hater's gonna hate. <laughs> Seriously, she went that route. Yes. Like a boss. Like a boss. Uh, let's go. Like a boss. Mm. Pinky answered Mr. with a Mr. thank you for coming to your performance. I descended on the flames died out. It was just Pinky being Pinky. No reason to argue. She sighed, but every pony in the street had stopped and was staring at him. Let's just... We gotta hurry! Twilight, her face as red as a tomato, took Pinky and Shadow and dashed away towards the castle. What do you mean we can't be lending? I'm just just personal student! Twilight was trying to get past the guards blocking the entrance. Sorry, but we couldn't be allowed. They'll let you in even if you were Lauren Foster's sweet. Uh, uh, can you come? Can Break you conclude the this? Fourth one, motherfuckers. Can you can you complete the fucking sentence before you go? What? Sorry, but we couldn't let you. Like, we could. We wouldn't be allowed to let you in even if you were Lauren Foster's self. What? Wow. Uh, How many universes uh, has collided with Equestria now? Uh, um, by my count, I think I've counted about uh, 72. Let's go. And and still count, and still rising. Mm, fuck. Now, if you could back off a little before I make you back off. Twilight backed off to Shadow and Pinky. She was grinding her teeth so hard that Pinky could swear she saw small chunks of him fly out. Uh-oh. Twilight's pissed. Bunker down, people. Yes. How are we supposed oh, to get in? That will help. Kind of thought for a moment before he was interrupted by Faithful Student coming through! Twilight charged toward the guards with her horn glowing. She blasted them away and charged right through the heavy door. Bam! Oh I my get the feeling we're gonna see something that'll be totally out of the blue, totally random, and it's going to fuck with our heads. Oh uh, my god, she just ran in. What should we do? Shadow looked at Pinky in confusion. Oh my gosh, she just ran in. Say it, like, stick it clean, stick it clean, let's go. Let's go. go. <laughs> Damn it, Leroy. Just stick to the plan. When the distance subsided, Pinky and Shadow were stuck into the wrecked door. Twilight was standing in front of the throne, Celestia taking a nap in it. Twilight saw that Celestia's cutie mark was gone. Damn. It is a phony. You did, did anybody else catch that Leroy Jenkins reference? That I just did. <laughs> At least I had chicken. Hmm. Um, <sighs> Celestia? Where's your cutie mark? Celestia woke up and blinked a couple of times. One of her eyes blue and the other red. Okay. It's a phony! Let's, let's it like it's this. a motherfucker! Fluttershy's body 
is now back to being Fluttershy's, but Fluttershy just found a new home. I don't know. Maybe it's... I have no idea. Might have been a manipulation. As... Well, it's not Fluttershy anymore. Now it's Celeste's shout. Oh! We're fucked. Let's, um... Why do you want to know? So let's just spat back at Ooh. Damn. Yep. Twilight was I shocked talk. when she heard her mentor talk like that. Something was indeed wrong. What? Don't you recognize me? It's Twilight Sparkle, your most beautiful student. So let's just eyed her for a while. Her blue and eye, red eyes made Twilight feel incredibly uncomfortable. Oh, yeah. Ah, that failure of the unicorn I sent to Ponyville to get rid of. Are you here to pester me with more of your friendship reports? Ouch. Oh, let's go ahead and I, slap I, a dad copy. Sometimes I call these things, and I'm disturbed by the fact that I keep calling it. Twilight staggered back. She couldn't believe what she was hearing. Celestia pushed her aside and began to walk away. Shadow and Pinky ran after Twilight's side, having trouble standing up after what Celestia had said. Now, if you and your little friends who kind of get out of my sights, I have a new queen to announce. What? Pinky and Twilight yelled in unison. All that Chalo could say, we were too late. Yep. You took too much time, and now it's too late. It ain't Fluttershot anymore, ladies and gentlemen. I give you Princess Celeste a shout. Ooh. Ugh. I got the jibblies all of a sudden. Jibber, jibbers! Jibble. Jibble, jibble. Yeah, that could be. I can say if we say. I can't wait until the next few chapters are finished. Is that it? I want to see when the hell I get my fucking cameo. Huh? <laughs> I didn't get my cameo. <laughs> so is that pretty much it? It's not, it's not just me, man. I mean, Those are on. the only five chapters that are available. I don't know when the others will be completed, but I really hope they are Here's soon. The thing, though, man. I mean, okay. It's about you and Fluttershot. We get that, but come on, you can't. You can't have you without the rest of G Generation X for that matter. Come on. You we will throw a little starstruck in there. That's being nice. Hey, mm. at least Inverted does. At least Inverted has got an actual yeah. fan. I'm not well, saying. Well, come on. No, it's not. It's, it's got a, he's got a shitload of fans, dude. So do I, but damn it. I worked hard for I this shit. I don't have that many fans. He's got like 10,000 plus fans. I've got like three, almost 400. Well, then. Look, you need to put some. Was, uh, you need to get really some. interesting more. night. Yeah, for pretty then much. Then again, I haven't made shit, so yeah. Yeah, you probably need to get to work on some of it. Gain your, gain yourself I some would, followers. I would. I'm a lazy bum. Get, well, well, get off your lazy bum, bum, man! Wait, 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 wait. Maybe with this reading, maybe now it'll, it'll give you some inspiration you need, Carol. Yeah, I got some already some inspiration for Escape from Ponyville, but in terms of my own ideas, it's. Uh, 